Hello everyone. Welcome to my tutorial. This is HTML day 2 tutorial. Earlier, I mean yesterday, I published one, one video on HTML. The day 1 HTML video in which we have discussed some of the basic concept in HTML5 such as what is the use of doc type, HTML, tag, what is the use of head and what is the use of body, what do we mean by nested HTML tags and few more concept. So before watching this video please watch my day 1 HTML5 video. Today we are starting our training sessions on day 2 HTML and I can guarantee this will help you in your web design. Today we discuss most important concept of HTML5. Without this concept you can't imagine a website. So let's start. So today we are going to learn what is what do you mean by a table in HTML5 or we can say how we can show the data in row and column in a table like we have a set of data I want to show that data in a tabular structure how can we do that by using HTML5 table so this is the HTML5 table you can see here so if we uncomment this code just a moment here we have uncommented this code so before that I will again mention you that uh, whatever I am coding, I am using Visual Studio Code ID. This is the Visual Studio Code ID. There are a lot of cool features of this ID, having a lot of intelligence. Even we can run our web page in live server. So this ID provides a server for running our application. So how we can run this our, run our page, HTML page in live server of Visual Studio is I will let you know. Just right click on the HTML page. If you see there is an option called open with live server click on that it will open the page on your default browser I kept Google uh, Chrome as my default browser so see so the if you see my uh, so let me resize the screen a little bit so that it will be clearly visible just a moment yeah here we go so if you see the address bar it is 127 some address is given it is the address of the live server provided by visual studio code so it is awesome awesome id to code any ui technology for practice for real development for everything it is a good idea having a lot of intelligence lot of features uh, with a live server where you can host your application so this is the table so if you see this is the table how it is being displayed so if you see it is not displayed that properly because we have not given any css you cannot differentiate whether smith and jackson belongs to first name or last name and it is not looking that awesome for uh, like from the user perspective so to make it like more interactive with the user we will add some css to this table so we'll learn more about CSS in our CSS tutorial. But here it is very important to see or see the CSS that is required to give a look and feel to this table. Because without CSS, uh, it's quite impossible to teach HTML5. So here we go. Let me open my ID. So let me resize my ID a little bit so that. Uh, you can see how the CSS is yeah how the CSS is changing the look and feel of this table so this is our HTML page that I have shown I have created a table I will explain some little bit about the table for creating a table we need a table tag this is the starting tag this is the end tag then comes the caption caption tells uh, some uh, some information about the table why we have used this table what the data in the table reflect so data in the in the below table reflect the employee details so that's why i given the caption as employee details then comes the tr tag so tr corresponding to each row 
the number of rows in your table uh, equal to number of tr tag so this is one tr tag n start and n tr is one we can count it as one this is the second tr tag this is the third tr tag so we have three row in our table so if you see there are three row one is for header first name last name edge second row is for jill smith 50 third is for eve jackson 94 so there are three rows then comes so each every table has a header so for mentioning the header in your table you have to use th element so just a minute yeah. so we are using th element so th is for the header so when you are using th element those elements will be displayed in a bold letter because these are the header so first name is one header means first name is the head, header of the first column last name for the second header edge is for the third header and corresponding to each header we will we have to map the value for first name we have Jill for last name we have Smith for age we have 50 this is in the first row similar for the second row also Eve Jackson and 94 so these three means uh, once you declare the th element within the tr tag you have to declare the corresponding data for that th element so we have to use td element for that so td is for data th is for header and each td corresponding to the each th in this in the same sequence okay so i think up to this it is clear and uh, please give attention and it will be like really going to help you in your web design so let's come to the index.css so i have created the index.html and this is pointing to index.css page if you see here it is pointing by using this tag I, I means I taught you all this in my day one HTML how to link your HTML with the corresponding CSS file and JavaScript file. So please don't forget to watch day one HTML five to five videos that I have created. So let's give some CSS to the table. So here we need to add some border to the table. So why we need to add border to get everything like separated each row column should so looks good. So how to add border? Let's suppose if I am adding border to the table tag, this table tag corresponding to the table tag that we have used in our HTML page. So I am giving only border to the table tag. See how it looks. If we and one more thing you also notice once we save the file, this page will be refreshed because it is running in uh, live server of visual studio so that is the cool feature of this id if we save just keep an eye on the browser here you go yeah we get the border for the table see we get the outer border for the table but we have not get any border for the column and for the rows so for the header to get the border you have to use a comma sorry let me do again uh, you have to use a comma then th then again save it see we get the border for the header but we have not got the get the uh, border for the rows for that rows is represented by td so you have to use comma then td then save it see see how our uh, table looks like it's an awesome table so i have given a border of one pixel if you see here the syntax this is the CSS syntax we will learn more in CSS tutorial but for timing you just remember for border we have to give border colon one pixel then solid border then color of the border is black one pixel corresponds to thickness of border as we increase the thickness of border will increase and what do you mean by this border collapse we will see if we will comment this one for commenting you have to select that uh, corresponding text and you have to press control plus uh, yeah uh, control plus uh, that's last mark so then save it so once we come in the border colors we will see the table looks like this so we have an outer border even border for the header border for the rows also these are like looking like a separate border we want to collapse those border into one border how we can do that 
by using border collapse property just uncomment this one for uncomment also select and then press control plus slash see now the border is collapsed means all the border it collapsed into a single border so now our table looks good and i want to give some padding to my th for the header and for the row padding means if you want to increase the space around the content the space around the surrounding content is called padding you will see how it is impacting our look and feel I have given padding for the th for the header and for the row as well as same padding padding is 15 pixel i have given see the space around the element get increased and even our table height also increased okay so this is the use of padding and if you if you see the header the first name last name age all are center aligned but our rows values are left aligned we want to make this header also left aligned how we can do that for header we have to use th tag for left align we have to use text align colon left then save it see first name last name age are left aligned now everything looks good and one more one more thing like we can control the height and width of the table so here it is the syntax i have given width at 50 percent if we see the syntax table hashtag my table what do you mean by hashtag my table if you go to our html hashtag my table corresponding to this id equal to my table hash means id and i have given id a corresponding name if we are writing this id equal to something in css you have to write hashtag then whatever the id name you have given and this id corresponding to table that's why i have written table just before the id even with you can also remove the table that also it work so you and within that i am controlling the width i am given width at 50 percent 50 percent means if we consider our web screen means the screen that you are seeing as 100 percent then 50 percent is like 50 percent of that 100 percent if you make it 100 percent see what it will happen it is covering the entire screen so 100 percent means entire screen i think up to this everything is clear just please view with me so that we will be on same page okay let's suppose uh, i want to give some color to the header some coloring for better look and feel so for coloring what we have to do i have given the selector the, these are called the selectors okay so i have given hashtag my table then space th what do what does that means 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 the it means the html element having id as my table and within that html element we have th means th should be a child of this id so that's why we have given a space space, space means anything after this space it is will be child of before this space so th is the child of my table if you see <coughs> my table <coughs> sorry if you see my table is the id and we have th within the my table so th is a child of this table So if you and we have given color as white means the text will be uh, display as white and background color is black if you see the header looks like this background is black and text color is white then if you want to give some color to the data cell also how we can do that just comment and comment this one see this is how it looks so how, what we have given here so id is hashtag my table within that id we have tr element then colon nth child don't worry about that we will learn in css class we have given nth child event means for the event rows it will be displayed background as green for odd row will be displayed as background orange so our table starts from the odd count means first row always will take as odd First row means header itself. Header is one. It's odd. 
odd means it should be display in orange color but it is displaying in black color because we have given black color above that so if you comment this black color it will be display in orange color uh, just a minute you will see if i comment everything for the th if i am comment everything for the th now it is display as orange color and the second row is even that's why it is green third row is odd that's why it is orange So I think everything is clear or even how to give the coloring to the cells, to the rows, to the headers. Okay. If up to this everything is clear, then we are good for the development. We have learned one more one important concept like table, which is frequently being used in all the web application. So then some more important concept on table also there. Okay. Let me comment this first table and uncomment the below table. So here we learn some important concept about the table like call span and the row span. First of all, we learn what do you mean by call span. See, I am giving call span equal to two. Call span means the number of column that header will occupy. If we have given call span equal to n, means that column will occupy n n columns. So we have given call span is equal to two, means it will occupy two columns. So how it looks, you will see just a moment. See, it uh, it is looking like this. This telephone is the table. Sorry, telephone is the column that is like spanning over two columns. That's why within below the telephone we are getting two data. It is this is called call span. So telephone is spanning over two columns. So this is the syntax. So bill get goes to the name and last two data. This two data goes to the telephone column. Goes under the telephone column. This is what about the call span. Let me comment this one also. And we will learn about row span. Row span means if we are given something to the row span, it will cover that many number of rows. For example, I have given row span to the telephone. So telephone will cover two rows. And within the two rows, we will get two values. So here it looks. So we have displayed the table in an uh, key and value pair. Name is the key. Bill get is the value. Telephone is the key which is spanning over two columns. Sorry, two rows. That's why its height is increased. And it is having two values. It is covering two rows. So this is all about call span. We'll come in this table also. Then comes some. Then come to some. So our concept on table is over. So we we'll learn something about list. What do you mean by list? In the layman sense, if we say the list is a set of or group of uh, related items. Let's suppose we can say mango, apple, orange. All are belongs to a set. All all are similar kind of element belong to a group called fruits. So orange, mango, apple we can display in a list. So anything that is related to the same group we can display that in list. So we have many types of list. First of all we will talk about on order list. U, U for on order, Li corresponding to each list element. You will see in a moment how it looks. Just save the file. So this is the list. Coffee, tea, milk. These are all drinkable items, so that's why I grouped it in a list. So, if you see this list is displayed in a kind of bulletin point. This is the disk shape bulletin point. We can change, we can play with the bulletin point also by using the, by changing the CSS. How we can do that? Just in my first HTML tutorial, I have taught 
style is one of the attribute where you can change the look and feel of the element so in style we will give the property as this style type and see that see the cool feature of this uh, uh, id lot of features are like it is having a such a good uh, intelligence like all the values it is suggesting for that property so we'll choose circle so now now our bulletin point gone it looks like circle we can if if you don't want the bulletin point you have to give none see everything is gone it is like it is uh, displayed in top down fashion so by default it has this shape size so if you are not giving any style it will be displayed in disk shape this is a disk shape this is for the unordered list let's come to the order list so what do you mean by order list it is same as the unordered list but it is display in no in uh, numerical form you will see see unordered list it is display as bulletin it is display as as number One for coffee, two for three, two for tea, three for milk. So this is the order list. So it is called order because all the list items are displayed in having a having a unique number. In a serial wise, it is being displayed. That was that's why it is called order list. Then we have one more list called description list. D for description. A description list has dtst tag d for description t for term so this is the term for description list and another tag called dd d for first d for this des uh, description second uh, so dd means it's for, it is the description corresponding to that term so black hot drink is a description of the above term coffee so description list means we have a term and corresponding description so we have two tag dt and dd dt is the term dd is the description of that corresponding term if we save this how it looks you will see in a moment see how it looks coffee is the term and description is black hot drink milk is the term and description is white hot drink so this is the and this is our description list so here by mistake i have given s so i will save again everything get aligned coffee then it's description milk then it's description this is the description list even we can have nested list this is for the nested list nested list means if we have one list another another list so here it is the main so if you see for uh, within the list item t we have another list so this is nested within the list item t so this is this is an example of nested list if you save it you will see how it looks see coffee is one item t is a second item within the t we have two more type of t black tea and green tea then third item is milk so black tea and green tea are nested within the item list item t this is an example of nested list so we have covered all the concept all the types of list and how to change the look and feel of the list also like bulletin points square shape numerical what do mean order list description list how we can nest it one list with another within another list so so i will uh, tell you one important thing is like within the list item it is not like we have to put only the text within within the list we can put any kind of html element let it be header paragraph image anchor tag anything we can put so here is an example we are, we are using an anchor tag within the list item let me expand this little more so everything will be visible yeah 
so we are using anchor tag within the list item anchor tag having an url so i have created if you see this is my day2 folder i have created a few more folder within the day2 home folder checkout folder image folder order folder product list folder and within each folder we ha i have corresponding css and html and js if you see here home here so sorry here order here product list and i have created one shared folder also in which i have put the style.css in in style.css we are uh, we are uh, i am writing the css which is being repeatedly used in our rest of the pages means the css is being shared with our rest of the pages so i have put the, put that in style.css so whenever your css is to be used in multiple pages instead of writing it everywhere in in a separate css file like whatever present in style.css we can write it within we can write the same in the home.css we can write the same in order.css even product list.css but why we will repeat the same code again and again to avoid the redundancy of the code we have to create a shared folder and we have to create a file you can give any name for for the projects in like projects uh, perspective we have to give it as style.css and we will put the shared css within that file so that it will be reusable and i have created one image folder here i have uh, saved some of the images related to the product i have taken it from the google and save it here within a folder so that i will so uh, i will refer the refer this product in my product list page we will see in a little bit so this is my pro uh, project structure so now come to our what we have we, we are on using anchor tag within the li element within the list so this if we save this page it looks like this anchor tag and li so it is another list that's why it is it is displayed in bulletin points okay so now we are going to learn one of the important uses of this anchor tag sorry i mean this another list this another list can be used for making the navigation bar with the help of some css stuff so we already written ul another list with anchor tag means our uh, anchor tag is ready means our uh, anchor tag is ready on click of that we will navigate to the corresponding anchor uh, corresponding pages so now we have to give it look and feel to this uh, another list so that it will look as a uh, as a navigation bar how we can give we will see in our css so i have written for look and feel i have written in style.css why i have written this style.css because we need navigation bar everywhere throughout our application for the home page also we need navigation bar for product list also navigation bar for checkout also navigation for order also navigation bar so it's a kind of css that is being repeatedly used in all those pages so instead of repeating i have put in style.css which is being shared in all the pages so this is the style.css so here i have given some uh, css for like uh, for resetting our page for body i have given margin zero and for font family i have given how our uh, uh, I means text in our page looks what will be the font of that text so it is like we'll learn more about in css class the main thing is how to create a navigation bar so for navigation bar css start from here from the uh, ul element up to below so this is the css for creating a navigation bar okay so let me pull it little up what we have okay this is the css for navigation bar and uh, as it is a shared css i have to uh, refer the css in our html page so that html page will know where to pick up the css so for referring 
I have put a link. So this I have that in our my in my day one HTML tutorial how to refer a CSS file in your HTML by using the link tag. I have given href is style.css. So it is referring to the style.css within this shared folder. And here we will uh, we'll see one um, one cool feature of this ID. How to give the path. Correct path. So what we have to do. This HTML and shared folder. All are in the same level. So you have to give dot slash. See. It automatically suggests all the folder or all the files in that level. So we have to go to the shared folder. See, it is suggesting the CSS in the shared folder. So this is the full feature of this ID. So that's why I'm preferring this Visual Studio Code for coding purposes. Okay, so let's come to our tutorial. So what we are in, uh, we are in uh, how to refer our style.css in your HTML page by using this. Uh, I'm using the link tag. So if we Save it. See, our navigation bar is ready. See, it's having a awesome look and feel. Even on hover, it is the background is changing into black color. So, how we have done that? So, we will learn more in CSS class, but for time being, just remember uh, what you have to do. I have given CSS to the UL tag. UL tag corresponding, let me close this index.css, it is of no use now. Uh, I have given, so UL tag, here is the UL tag. So I have given some CSS to UL tag. I have given list style type is none. So let me comment the below code. Below individual code, I will comment. So let me so that you can understand like how this is affecting our web page and how this is changing look and feel of our web page. So I have given UL as list style type is none. So list style type none means so without giving how it looks. Without giving any CSS, it looks like this. Okay. Our list is looking like a bulletin point. Okay. So, if you want to remove the bulletin point, I already I already explained in this tutorial how we can do that. We have to give list type type none. If list style type is none, it will remove the bulletin point from the another list. Let's save it. We'll see. See the bulletin point is removed. Next, we want to see if you see this uh, list are displayed with some space from the top and some space from the left hand side. So the top space is because of margin and the left space is because of the padding. So this is given by the HTML element. By default, it is this UL element is coming with some margin and padding. So we have to make margin zero and padding zero. And we have to give some background color as black. Sorry, uh, some blue color. If we save this, see. This list items are uh, get shifted to the top and it is left aligned. We are not seeing any space to the left, neither from the top. So background color is blue. So that's why see this list is a block element. That's why when we give the background color as blue, then it will cover the entire screen. So what do you mean by block and inline? I taught that in my first video, HTML5 day one video. Then see, this list item means this li items are displayed in a top down fashion because it's a block element. We want to make this as an inline element. Inline means we want to display in a in a single row. So how we can do that? We have to choose the li element and we have to change the display as inline block it is important concept if we are making display inline block it will those elements get uh, displayed in a single line we will see save it see the li element are displayed in a single line 
So if a single line, that's why that height of the nav bar get decreased. So we'll adjust that height. Don't worry. Then if you see in the anchor tag, we are seeing the underline because anchor tag is already displayed as underline for anchor tag. So we want to remove this text decoration, this underline for, from the anchor tag. How we can do? This is what it is written. Li within Li we have anchor tag. Space means A is a child of Li. So we have given. So I will comment this up to this comment. Okay, I am given text decoration as none. It will remove the underline. If you see, the underline is removed. Then we, we see this anchor tag is displayed like very close to each other. We want to give some space between each anchor tag, between the home product list, between product list and checkout, between checkout and order. How we can do? By using some padding. Padding and we will give some color like in blue color by default anchor tag is displayed in uh, blue color so it is not looking good for uh, like because we have given background also in blue color so we will make this anchor tag display in white color and we have given some padding 16 pixel to give some space between the anchor tag so let's save it see this anchor tag is displayed in white color and having a lot of space 16 pixel space between each item now it looks good now we want to increase the height of this bar the anchor tag is an inline element so we, we should make it a block element so block means it will add some space at the top as well as button bottom so that's why our height get increased see navigation bar height is adjusted <coughs> Now we want when we mouse over this element, it should change the background color. So for this is because for better user interaction. How we can do by using this li within li we have anchor tag then colon hover. Colon hover means we learn more in CSS class. It means whenever we will move the mouse above that anchor tag its background whatever the css is written within this it will be applicable we have written background color so when we move the mouse above the anchor tag its background color will change to black color let's save it whenever we move mouse over the element its background color change to black color so now it looks good from user interaction perspective then we have given one more colon means one more class active class anchor tag having dot active class means this uh, this index means a dot active means we have given active class for an anchor tag okay and we have given background color as green so this active class we have defined for index dot html means mm, we have to define it is the first page or oh, it is not the first page here it is not required so it's fine we can remove this now we will keep it for other why it is being used whenever we will navigate to some page that particular element will get highlighted in home page when home will be highlighted how we will see now i am in home page so home is in green color that's why user will able to know like now user is in home page for that we have given this active and if you go to the home page i have given active class class equal to active for home this is i am i had coded this one and how you can do it dynamically we will learn in angular tutorial whenever you just click on a particular link that active link uh, get a new css means active css we will learn in our javascript tutorial or in angular tutorial for time being just hard coding the corresponding file for home.html i hard coded the home page as active and if you see i am repeating the header everywhere so this ul is the header so it will be better to put in header tag Head, header tag is html5 tag it's advanced tag it is a semantic tag we can see if anyone looks into this any lay person can understand this is used for header within the header tag we will put the ul element 
it won't affect our uh, means look and feel just for doc for the document purposes from the coding perspective it will be better to use the navigation bar within the header tag so like if we go to the our product list page let me move you to the product list page html see every page i am using this navigation bar because it should be rep uh, repeated in all the pages so that we can move back and forth from that page to any other pages and in product list i am given active for product list and similarly if you go to the checkout page checkout.html i have given active for checkout page so this active class i have defined in style.css why it is defined in style.css as i told this is to be used in multiple pages that's why it's a shared css that's why i have put that in style.css okay so let's close this style.css it is of no use now index.html in the index.html we have put only the header tag means for tag for the navigation bar it is also of no use now let's come to the home tag home tag we have put the header tag and whatever will the right below the navigation bar means for the home content will write in main area main is also one of the tag provided by uh, html5 we can write within the main tag we can put any other any tag also let's suppose i am putting a h1 tag welcome to home see if i will save it is being shown welcome to home it is shown just below the or navigation bar it is an awesome thing so what like for the content for the corresponding page we have to put that in main tag for the header we have to put that in header tag these are the html5 tags provided in html5 okay then come to the our so home page we need to develop we need to work on this home page but uh, i have completed uh, like some of the tasks for uh, product list and checkout page we'll see so main important is our product list page in product list page also if you see i have written the every uh, i've written the uh, code for navigation bar and for the content i have written that in within the main tag this is for this is the content area for the product list page this is the content here it ends okay what is written in this content is it's a repeated content i have i have created a container class within the container class i put four child this is this is one child and this child contains the image tag how to use image tag i uh, i taught it in html day one html uh five video you will learn from that if you see we are using an, uh, another list for the description for listing the description so why it is using in list because these are related to a common category description whenever something is related to a common category <coughs> oh, sorry we have to display in another list so <clears throat> this is for another list and uh, below the description we have a, a button for checkout and within the button i have written an anchor tag so that one click of checkout will be navigated to checkout.html page this is being repeated four times this is the second product this is the second div for the second product this is the third div for the third product this is the fourth div for the fourth product if you see in each of the div we have image tag image tag we are having src attribute and in src we have mm, uh, we have uh, like 
point the src to an image address this is the image that we have saved in our code within the image folder within the image folder so src is pointing to the our images if you see there are images lenovo k10 mi a3 realme 5 redmi note 8 So if you save this, we'll see how it looks. Let's navigate to product list page. Yeah. So let me adjust it a little bit. <coughs> this is how our uh, this is how our product list page looks. Okay. So let me adjust a little bit more also. Just a moment. Let me adjust it. So that we will see the entire screen. Just looking more also. Here we go. So see, this is our screen. In product list, I have displayed the four mobiles. The description are displayed in in a another list having bulletin point. I have a checkout button. So this is one of the best uses of another list. So for description we have used another list because the description belongs to a category called description. These are all related items. Means these are related to that particular product. So these are the same kind of items. That's why we are displayed in a bulletin point in a list. And if we click on the checkout page it will be navigated to the checkout page. What we have written in checkout page just we will see. We will close everything, we will go to the checkout page, then checkout.html and checkout.html we have done something, we have, re we have uh, repeated the header, then we have re written the content within the main tag. So this, uh, this container, so in checkout.html we have used table. So here we learn more about table. Here here it is your task to implement the table in your web page. I have given table then caption checkout list. So checkout list means it gives in, caption means it will give information about the table why it is being used for. And table I have displayed product name, color, price. So this is the header that I already explained. These are the corresponding rows for those headers. And below the table. I kept two buttons, one confirm order button, one cancel order button. On click of confirm order, it will be navigated to our order.html page. On cancel order, we will be navigated back to the product list.html page. Okay. And one more thing I forgot, like in all the pages, as we are using this header because for navigation, so we need to refer the style.css page in all our HTML pages so that this navigation bar will have same look and feel. And after our set CSS, we have to give the CSS corresponding to that to the corresponding HTML. Then we can give the JS file. This is how it is being written. If you go to the style.css, so checkout.css, I have written all the what I have taught for table CSS. I have written all the CSS, even I have given color, even child color is something this hashtag DD format. Then there are different way of giving color that I have taught in my day one HTML5 video. Please have a watch on that. Then I have given the button container. Button container means let me open it, scroll it, scroll down. So, this is the button container within the div. We have put two buttons, and I want this button, these two buttons should be right aligned. So, that's why I have given class equal to button container. For class, we have to refer in form of dot 
then class name which is 100 percent that will cover the entire uh, screen text align is right so that whatever be written within the div tag within that uh, within the html element having the class button ctn means the div tab all those things will be right aligned whatever being written within the div tag will be right aligned so these two button will be right aligned now i have given some uh, css for button for look and feel its background color is green color text is white border outline we are not required padding to increase some spacing margin top for uh, <coughs> for giving some margin at the top for cursor for pointer cursor is pointer for so that when we move the mouse over the buttons it will be in some hand symbol if you see if we move the mouse over the button it will be reflected in hand symbol so we can know it is a clickable thing so for that we have used cursor as pointer then box shadow to give some shadow effect margin left top then uh, within the button if you see within the button we have written the anchor tag for navigation so that on click a button it will navigate to corresponding page and anchor tag by default i already explained it will display an underline so we have to remove that underline means the text decoration i make the text decoration and none so this is all kind of stuff i have done for checkout let's click on an items it will be navigated to checkout page here it will checkout list is a in the checkout page you will see a table having caption at checkout list and having three col means three columns product name color and price and the corresponding data so here it will show all those products that has been checked out from the product list page for time being i have used the hardcoded data and this functionality like whatever product will uh, click those products only show in this table that kind of functionality will handle in angular tutorial so for html css it is not required to handle those just for look and feel you will see the functionality should be like this like what I want to explain is if I click on the checkout Lenovo K10 only Lenovo K10 will be shown in the checkout page if I click on the Redmi Note 8 then both Lenovo and Redmi should be shown in the checkout page if I click on the third then this three should be shown in the checkout page so in this way the function should be like that <coughs> along we have created as i explained i have created two buttons confirm order and cancel order user can cancel order it will be navigated to the product list page for confirm order it will be navigated to the orders page so if you see on click of confirm order we are navigating to the order page we have not i have not uh, done and i have not written any code for this order page we will take care later then again back to the checkout page on click of confirm order it will navigate to order page that i have seen on cancel order it will navigate to the product list page back to the product list page see. so it is almost done so here we have implemented the list we have implemented the table even for even the button for navigation back and forth we learn how to use the shared css using the shared folder style.css okay and we have learned how should be the project structure how should be the pro folder looks like and how to keep the image in a separate folder so and few more about and we learn more about css also some means we'll learn more detail in css in my css tutorials don't worry about that be tuned with me so whatever i have learned with the css you just have to go through that no need to remember we will we will like go through each and every property in detail in our css class because without css it is difficult to teach html for getting a look and feel we have to use css okay so this is for two days we learn table and list one of the important concepts that is being repeatedly used in our day-to-day -day project thank you guys for watching these videos and we'll we'll meet in my in my third day three third tutorial so before that i can say uh, if you see so before winding off i will show you my youtube channel this is the url of my youtube channel
okay so you just have to note it down and it will navigate to my on press of enter you will be navigated to my youtube channel where you find couple of videos see you where you also find some videos on angular tutorial also angular interview questions some basic about the angular so i have started it this uh, videos 9 month or 10 months ago but somehow i couldn't able to complete that we will i will complete these videos and you will find the day one html videos also so please note down the url so once again i will back so this is the url for my page please note it down and I am uh, I am uploading my second video day two HTML5 in this channel also you can go through that. Okay. Thank you all. It's an honor to have you all as an audience. Please comment in uh, in this video and please give some feedback how to improve this improve the video so that it will be helpful to you guys. Please subscribe to my channel and please share my videos and keep t keep tuning with me. And we'll meet in my third day three HTML five videos tomorrow. Till then, goodbye.